Greetings from the End Time Apostolic Christian Holiness Church, located at 650 South Warren Avenue in Columbus, Ohio, where Jesus is Lord and our pastor is Bishop Dr. Derek A. Reeves. Due to COVID-19 restrictions, our order of services have changed and are as follows. Sunday School at 9 a.m. Sunday Morning Worship at 11 a.m. Our weekday services, Tuesday, Bible study at 6 p.m. Wednesday, prayer at 7 p.m. Our services will be available via Zoom and Facebook Live. Let us join in as the Word of God comes forth that is able to heal, save, and deliver. Part of Joshua 24 and 15. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This morning's message is simply entitled, The Assessment. The Assessment. Father, I need to hear from you one more time. Touch this vessel and keep me as I stand in the gap. For your people are such a great people and you love them and I thank you in Jesus name, amen. There are some who are in league with your enemies. And these individuals are enemies of your purpose and the enemies of your very existence. They don't want to see you succeed or excel because to do so means they must admit that there is something to the God that you serve. And that is why the body of Christ must come to realize that we just do not represent ourselves. We are the representatives of the church, of the kingdom, and of God. These individuals have received a desire to compound and complicate your life. And when I speak of these individuals, we have to remember that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, dominions, and wicked powers in high places. We are fighting with unseen enemies who can use humans as tools. God said, pray for your enemies. He didn't mean pray for demons but he means for us to pray for our enemies because they are being used by spiritual wickedness and demonic powers to come to you and there is still hope for them. And so these entities, they seek to hinder, to destroy our legacy, our destiny, or and our faith in God. When I speak of legacy, I speak of the giftings that God has placed in you in order for you to achieve and to succeed. There is something that God has for you to do as he raises you up to leave something for those who are coming behind. Whether it be knowledge, wisdom, or access to power and the blessings of your God. And the enemy seeks to kill it in the cradle. But tell somebody, I am determined that I will excel through the name and the power of Christ Jesus. I know he has power to bring me out. Oh my God, my God, my God. And so when we look at it, Israel is at a point now where they must make a decision to remember. 
They are at a point now where if they forget all that they've been through, they will find it easy to forget their God. God speaks to Joshua. And Joshua stands in the stead of God to remind the people of God. You've got to remember that it was God that brought you out of Egypt. You were there suffering and you were there going under the task of Pharaoh. And when you cried out in the fullness of time, God raised a deliverer to bring you out. Do you remember what your life was like before Jesus? Do you remember how you fell and almost didn't get up? Can you remember where you've come from? If you can, just tell him, God, I remember. Mm. They're going through. And God said, lest you forget how you made it over. Lest you forget that it was God who brought you out. You went in by your own making, but God brought you out. You made a bad decision, but God brought you out. If the coin was flipped any other way, you could have been locked up, buried in an insane asylum, the casualty of a drive-by, but God, if, hallelujah, things went another way, you wouldn't be here today, but God designed it up that the world would be better with you in it than you gone. And that's why as anointed, appointed, and blood washed ones, we give him praise and honor. Oh my God, we realize it was nobody but Jesus. We understand that in spite of it all, it was Jesus. Israel was at a point in time in their life where they had come through the desert, come through wars, been victorious because God's hand was in it. I keep telling you, quit praying about money. Quit asking God, send money and say, God, help me to do this. Just, just, you just got to tell him, God, show up. God, show up because in his presence, there is a fullness of joy. Mm, why is the joy in his presence? Because when God shows up, things happen. When God shows up, stuff has got to move. When God shows up, whatever is not right concerning you, he sets it right. If he has to deal with you before he deals with the circumstance, God will fix it. Tell somebody, I know he will. He fixed it for me even when I had an attitude. He fixed it for me when I didn't understand it. God is a fixer. God is an organizer. God is a deliverer. Come on, give him praise. And so God says, remember, remember, I said I'm going to give you the land. The land that others will be dispossessed from. Uh, see, we don't want to stop because we get the blessing. Because you can be dispossessed from the blessing. Every blessing, good and perfect gift comes from God. Mm, if God has given you something, it is perfect for your situation. Whether it is husband, children, friends, tell somebody it's perfect. I don't always understand it, but God gives us exactly what we need. If we can hear 
him and we're willing to obey. Tell somebody it's perfect. Uh, God doesn't give me any junk. So stop looking at your kids, rolling your eyes and just saying, I rue the day. No, rejoice. Because remember, you were a child one time and uh, somebody looked at you. But if it had not been for God, uh, you would have been tossed away. Uh, see, I don't just thank God uh, mm, for things today. I thank him for yesterday. Mm. I thank him for today. But I also thank him for where I'm headed. Because as long as I'm on the straight and narrow, God will see me through. See, you've got to realize that there is no devil, demon, fallen archetype, archon that can stop you when you're in the word of God. There is nothing that is more powerful than your God. Though I wish you could hear me. The God God on Mount Sinai is the spiritual entity that's in you and he's the hope of glory. Tell somebody I've got him on the inside. Now just look to heaven and say God help me to embrace who and what you are. Help me to discover that you're greater than anything and there's power in your name and you've given me the name of power that I might lose it in my circumstance and walk in victory oh my god ah, look at somebody and tell them uh, you must declare your victory you must declare the word of god uh, whom god has set free is free indeed you've got to declare my mind will not be bound my life will not be bound Jesus set me free and I'm going to praise him for it. Without him, I would be pound. Without him, I would be enslaved. But he's made a way out of no way and I praise him. pray for me. Oh, I wish I had the energy I had when I was in my 30s. But God knows. Glory to God. When we look at the text, oh, I feel this thing in here. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Tell somebody, you've got to learn to thank him. Even in your down time. Because if you're down, the Bible says he is a resurrector and he will lift you up. Hallelujah. Acknowledge him. He is the Jehovah Jireh. And he will provide. He will lift you up in a time of need. Hallelujah. He's more than able. He's more than capable. Just learn to praise him wherever you are. Oh my God. When we look at the text, verse 9, the Bible says, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab. Remember, the Moabites were the cousins to the Hebrews. Oh, are you not hearing me? They were kin to Israel through Lot, but they were a product of incest. Oh, I wish you could hear me. I don't have time to go through the backdrop of Sodom and Gomorrah and God bringing them out. Some stuff you don't want to let go of because you're bound to a praiser and somebody that prays like Abram. The Bible says they lingered and the angel snatched them and said, come on, hush your stuff. I can't do anything till I get you out of 
here. And sometimes you prolong the existence of evil because God's trying to get you out but you're trying to hold on to some dead stuff mm, tell your neighbor let it go and get out of that mess that you're in so God can do his thing hallelujah the angel pulled him mm, and when they thought they were the only survivors yes, sir, Bishop. his daughters made lot to drink wine and consummated with them and from there comes Moab and so sometimes it's the cousins it's the stuff you know that you're bound to that tries to kill you and with reverse oh come on here with reverse transference want to make you responsible for their decisions and their behavior reverse transference is I come to you and I load on you all of my problems and make you feel responsible for how I turn out. Uh, Y'all not hearing me. I've seen people and they say, well, Bishop, if you would have, oh, no, 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 let's back up the train. My name is not Holy or Ghost. Mm, that's why God gives you the Holy Ghost. And that's why God gives you the opportunity to come to him. Oh, my God. If you would have, no, I gave you the word. If you would have heard the word and applied it to your life, there would be a God who can lead you just as he leads me. And so reverse transference seeks to have people kowtow and bow because I know how to work your guilt. I want you to feel responsible for my issues. Tell somebody the Holy Ghost delivered me from all of that stuff. There's a point and time that you have to make a choice as to what you will do with your life. It makes no sense to be 40 and 50 and running in circles like you did when you were a child. Child. Tell somebody, grow up. It is time to grow up because the day of reckoning is coming where every man must be accountable for the deeds done in their body. While you have a chance, hallelujah, choose today that you'll serve Jesus. You still got time. While there's life in your body, you still have have time oh my god when we look at it the bible says mm, he said i'm going to give you the land i promised to give you something look at somebody and says he promised me something i know he spoke to you have you gotten it yet? Oh my God. God is not slack concerning his promise. But with every promise, there is an if. Capital I-F. To put it in the Ebonics or Urban Ebonics, it would be capital I-F-F. If mm, you do this, then God will do that. Tell somebody you've got to make a choice and you've got to make a stand. What will you do for God concerning you? Mm. And so the Bible says, oh my God, there comes a time, Balak, there's a reason why this term is defined in scripture, because it gives you the characteristics of this king. And sometimes we just read over it, run through it, and miss all of the wisdom that God desires. Remember, under the Brit Mila, the naming ceremony, they didn't just do like we do, pull the name out of a book or we get some type of inspiration from a devil or flesh or something. 
and just tack a name on. You know, I'm kind of weary when we put these annihilator names on children. There's a lot of that going on, Anila, Anili, Anilo. Listen, you've got to watch because every day you're calling them destroyer, killer, disruptor. You've got to be careful and the spirit will assimilate to what you are speaking into the soul. So stop calling your kill children crazy. You idiot, you dummy. No, you've got to speak life into them. And I'm not talking about hocus pocus. It's just a psychological thing. What you tell people they are, they will either assimilate to it or reject it. And the child that easily assimilates. And so when we look at the term Balak, oh my God, it comes from a word Balak and it means waster, uh, not wasting resources, but it means to annihilate and to make waste. And so this king's character was he took no prisoners. He wanted to destroy them utterly. The Bible says he rose up to war against Israel. Now remember, Israel was Jacob the supplanter. Look at somebody and tell him, I know where he's going with this. But when God gets a hold of you, your character changes. You're still in the body, but behavior has to adjust if the Holy Ghost has you. If you're still mean and connected cantankerous and obnoxious and abnoxious and noxious uh, then something's wrong with your relationship with your God uh, because he changes you let me say it again he changes you the gun toting uh, y'all don't hear me razor slashing tongue slashing he takes the sting of Death, and death is equated with sin. He takes it out of you. Before you get ready to cut somebody with your tongue, if the Holy Ghost has you, he'll say, uh-uh, 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 that's not befitting for my mouth. Uh, well, what do you mean my mouth? This is my mouth. No. He says, we all belong to him. Tell somebody, I hope you are a living sacrifice, uh, holy and acceptable unto God, which is his, uh, hallelujah, account of reasonable service. Tell somebody there must be a change. Oh, if you are going to go to heaven, you didn't need to stay mean and telling off folk to have the Holy Ghost. You did that before you got the Holy Ghost. So why when you get the Holy Ghost, you become more bold in the flesh rather than the spirit. Well, Bishop, you just don't know what I've gone through. There is nothing that is not common to man. Tell somebody, we all have a bad day. We all go through the fire. We all get disappointed. We all get heartbroken. But the Holy Ghost in you should keep you. The Holy Ghost in you should shift you and convict you before you get it. Oh my God, so he is an annihilator. Uh, let me move on. I've got a lot of ground to cover in a little bit of time. And um, so he is a destroyer. Uh, mm, he brings disaster. Uh, and he realizes this Israel, those who prevail with God, those who have power with God. Tell somebody you are not an Israeli born citizen, but you are a Jew. Mm. Oh, you don't hear me. A true Jew is one who is circumcised in their heart. And if the Holy Ghost has circumcised your heart, you have the traits of Judah. That's why we dance all around the room. I don't have time to tell folk you doing the voodoo dance. If you don't understand the movement of the Holy Ghost and how he moves on your spirit, mm, 
God restores the praise of old. Do you remember David who spun around and danced out of his royal clothes? Uh, listen, when you've been in the fire, you don't care about folk talking about how unseemly that is. Uh, you just know you almost died uh, and you want to give God your best praise. Uh, no matter what it looks like to folk, uh, you just trying to tell him, God, I thank you. God, I've been down so long, but you lifted me up and I praise you with everything I have. Hallelujah. So here's this destroyer. He seeks to annihilate them. But the Bible says he can't. There's something special spiritual about these people. Uh, you see where I'm going with that? Uh, and because they are in league with the covenant of God, no one can destroy them. Uh, oh, I wish the church could believe that with your better covenant. Uh, oh my God. And so he realizes he can't do it with weapons. He can't do it with an army. Tell somebody, you can slap my face but you can't hurt my spirit oh my god and so he calls on Balaam oh my god mm. calls on Balaam the son of Zippor now it's interesting because Zippor means sparrow he was one who obviously was light and you know he may have had merriment in his heart but the term Balaam oh my god deals with he who is either a blesser or a curser he had a power with God to a degree because what he said God backed it up there's some folk who are not worshiping in the same house with you that's why I don't fight with Trinitarians listen we're all trying to figure it out and the church fathers they are not the last authorities of the word. That's why folk who speak of the church fathers, they listen to some parts because they say some parts are tantamount to salvation while others aren't. Oh my God, you pick and choose what you find convenient. That's why we've got to go by the word. And uh, this man has power with God. And Balak calls him because he wants them to be cursed. Very interesting, very interesting. He calls on somebody connected to God to curse the people of God. Sounds like an oxymoron to me. Why would you oh my god even think you can curse me when i belong to god i wish some folk would hear me i remember folk when you swept over their feet they started spitting on the broom because they said if you sweep their feet they, they know folk that went to jail listen quit all that superstition you remind me of the folk that had all those temples one to diana one to mercurius one to jupiter and then Paul says, now this one caught my attention. The temple to the unknown God. Tell somebody he is known now partially by his body. Uh, I know him to be a way maker. I know him to be a deliverer. Oh my God, do you know him today? Oh, that sounds kind of weak. Well, I'm going to say, I know him to be a friend oh my god and so Balaam Balaam his Hebrew name is Bilam and it means not of the people he was not connected to Moab but he was a foreigner I remember working years ago and I was doing janitorial work for a company up on campus we cleaned the OSU golf course course and there was a young man that kept wanting me to get high with him and listen I don't care who I am and who I'm with I'm saved first I'm not taking a weekend diversion where I'm gonna let my hair down
down and take a few drinks. Shame on you. Hallelujah to God. God didn't save you for you to take a weekend time out to get drunk with folk. You need to witness to. Shame on you. Don't let the rapture catch you uh, tipping and dipping in sin. Uh, you need to cry to God and say, God, fix me. Jesus. And here comes Balaam or Balaam and the Bible. Remember, he is the son of Balaam, the son of Beor. And Beor, it deals with a burning lamb. And so this father instilled something into his son. You can put more in your children than just video games. Oh, I wish you could hear me. Video games, raise them in the morning. Raise them in the noonday. Raise them all night long. Sometimes you need to slap them jokers on that big head and say, get off that game. There's more to life than, oh God, battle strategies and whatever they're playing. Listen, we and they start crying because you say get off then uh, all right uh, a week you're not going to be on it because uh, you are addicted to something that is imparting some type of control system to you tell your neighbor you've got to get involved with your children I don't have time you'll have time when they start hitting you in the head or going to jail you got to raise them now you don't have to say amen. It already is amen. And so he's paid to curse them. Well, what is a curse? A curse, it's interesting. And I'm going to take a segue. I'm not going to go through all of this. But the curse means it comes from two ancient Hebrew pictographs. One is the staff of a shepherd. The other is the head of a man. And so it means is to be pulled to the shepherd and to throw yourself down, hallelujah, come on here, at his feet. And so, oh my God, Balak is saying, I want you to bring them to a point where they now become subservient to me. Bring them to a point where they bow down to me and they are no more significant. They have no strength. They have no fight. They have no ability. They're just useless. Tell somebody the devil's trying to bring you into a useless situation where you can't operate in the spirit. Tell somebody, I might go through the fire, but I refuse to bow. Now, hush your stuff if the devil got you in his back pocket because I declared by the time you get out the door, you're going to be bowing. Yes, yes, he am is. Hallelujah. So you got to make up in your mind I'm through with being controlled I'm through with my mind going from left to right and left to right up and down there comes a time you've got to make a choice or circumstances and God will make the choice for you mm. all right I've got to move and so he seeks to curse them to render them unimportant, unfit, hallelujah, without strength, without mental fortitude. Quit all that stuff. I lost control. No, you gave away control. Hallelujah. That's why you were controlling you when you went off. <laughs> because you can't do anything without you willing to do it. Look at somebody and say, no, you didn't lose control, honey. You gave it away <laughs> to another part of your mind. And the part that is hidden, that likes to tell folk where to go, what train to get on, and when to get off, you open the door for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. 
The viper came out because that's who and what you are in secret. Amen. Thank you. Glory to God. See, I got to praise him because I know he's worthy. And you all looking at me like, mm, what's he talking about? I praise you, dear Lord. I'm so, he seeks to curse them. I was telling you about the golf course, I didn't forget. Some people think because you get in your 60s, you ramble. No, there's other branches and rabbit holes. So we're coming back out of the rabbit hole. Tell, tell your neighbor his name is not Alice and he's not following the white rabbit down the hole. Amen. And so I worked there. He kept trying to get me to get high with him. But when you're saved, you're saved all the time. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Which means you saved when you're mad. You're saved when you're disappointed. You're saved when they hurt your feelings. You're saved when they tempt you. You know, ain't that like the devil? He'll give you the biggest blunt for free to compromise your Holy Ghost. Ain't that like the devil? He'll show you the prettiest man or woman when you couldn't even even get somebody that looked like the fly, a brundle fly, but he'll bring that stuff to you and have you stammering because he wants you to compromise the Holy Ghost. Now here you wonder it should make sense. Now brundle wouldn't even speak to me, but now here comes gorgeous. Something must be wrong. But we start sauntering and say, I guess I are still have it. No, you ain't got it. Your, your sugar turned to sage ages ago. Just grow up and realize. Get beautiful in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. And so he wanted me. Well, can you come over? I said, no, I ain't coming over. I know you into witchcraft, and I'm not coming to your house. Well, I ain't going to do nothing. I said, I know you ain't because I'm not coming. Hallelujah. So you got to tell the devil up front. Oh, my God. And he worked behind the scenes because you could only get one car on the parking lot after night. Now, he done called the man and said, you know what? Instead of you going way up north and come in here uh, he can just come over our house and you can pick us up all up in one place and so the man called he said now I ain't gonna be able to go way up north because I only get so much gas I said uh, what are you saying he said I'm gonna meet you over brother so-and-so's house and he didn't say brother I'm just saying it so I don't say the name and so I look at him and I did one of those Yosemite Sam minutes I said you're despair Hallelujah. And he just laughed. He said, I told you I'm going to get you over. Listen, it doesn't matter how the devil ensnares you. Tell somebody, I've got angels. Mm. You can lay a trap for me, throw me in the dungeon. But as long as I'm connected to God, it's God giving me more experience. When he brings me out, I'm going to be able to control more of my my surroundings so I get over there and he done had this elaborate dinner I said I ain't eating this stuff I don't know what you're gonna put in this he said come on I'm not that desperate I said sure you are and I refuse to eat Oh, y'all don't hear me. He said, well, at least get some water. And I was thirsty. I said, okay, I'll get it. And then he tried to, listen, that's what I'm trying to tell you, old folk. When we tell you, keep your behind out of stuff, we've been there. I've been to parties where they spiked it and, and girls pouring vodka all over themselves, trying to kiss on me. I don't want all that filth kissing on me when you done kissed on eight folk in the room. Hallelujah. You've got to have some kind of integrity. Tell somebody, I'm not a sheepdog on the backside of the mountain who's going through heat. Let me leave that alone. I think I'm giving too much information there. And so we got to the golf course and he said, so do you want to uh, do something on tomorrow? I can get some, uh, some herb and we can hook it up. I said, no. And, and I said, and first of all, I'm going to wait on the 
porch from now on. He said, how are you going to do that? It's winter time. I said, watch me. I'll just put some, uh, you know, some long johns on and, and I'll buck up. He said, now you're just being impractical. I said, well, I may be impractical, but that's how I am. And then he took his golden, you know, one of those long jean watches, very expensive, and he threw it on the ground and threw some powder on my feet and started mumbling in these tongues. And so I started speaking in tongues. And he said, you can't outpower me. I said, baby, you already outpowered by the power of God. And he said, your tongues, I said, no, your tongues are going to fall to the ground. And so he turned up the light from the, from the room where we get our supplies and slammed the door. And I just turned it on and just went about my business. And I said, Lord, bless him. Three weeks later, he was found in his apartment uh, where someone had stabbed him with multiple stab wounds. Tell somebody, touch me if you want. Because you might think I'm where you found me, but with God, it's one step away. As long as I get back in God, he can clean me up and fix me and that's the apple of his eye when you touch me it's like poking your finger in God's eye tell somebody I'm not everything you think I ought to be and if the truth be told you're not either but I'm in the hand of God and so the Bible So the Bible, uh, we don't have time, uh, we got to go. And so the Bible says, uh, he comes and he tries to curse them. And uh, here we find in this scenario, God said, but I will not, uh, I did not hearken to him. Even though he was a paid pulpiteer, a paid prophet, he had power with me, but when you have power with God, you never have power over God. And that's why you got to be careful. You trying to summon a demon to curse somebody. Listen, in your right mind, a demon, a fallen angel can't be controlled by you through some spell as you're trying to work the spell, you're just opening the gate for them to further control you. Tell somebody something that is older than the earth itself can't be controlled by an earth monkey. Come on, then I'm using that term not from an evolutionary standpoint. You're just dust with breath in you. You can't control them through some spell through some rune, through some mark. Listen, they're greater than your witchcraft. They just want to lure you in. I'm so glad I don't have to remember rune marks and scratch stuff in my body and throw up all this kill a bird and light a fire on the candle. I can just say, Jesus. And he knows what I mean. And he'll be there in a hurry to deliver me. Have you tried it? Come on, just say, Jesus. I declare you to say it with meaning. Jesus. Hallelujah. God said he would not hear him and every time he opened his mouth to curse a blessing came out every time he opened his mouth to make them ineffective God blessed them and lifted them higher and higher and higher then he goes through how you warred against the Amalekites and the Hittites and the Hivites the Jebusites and all of the I Tell somebody, I don't care what battle you're in with the night. Hallelujah. God can see you through. For the word of God is an example of what 
God can do if he did it for them he can certainly do it for you and so it comes to the point where they must make an assessment he says now you've got to put away the gods of your father what daddy said in his unregenerated sense some of it is wisdom but some of it you've got to take with a grain of salt if it isn't the scripture you got to throw it away hallelujah oh y'all ain't hearing me he says now you've got to make a choice you've got to put away the gods of your father with their witchcraft with their animism with their voodoo with all this hoodoo with all this santeria and everything else you've got to put it away the dream psychology oh when I dream of fish somebody's pregnant that's your stuff uh, if you want to know somebody pregnant open up your spirit and say God speak to me carrying a hoe uh, hi it's a girl low is, listen I've seen folk hung real low and have two boys uh, uh, y'all ain't listening to me uh, you got to stop with the ancient connection to superstition and acknowledge well I don't care what Bishop said Hey, uh, that stuff work out yeah, the devil will make sure it comes true uh, the Bible said acknowledge him in all your ways uh, and he will direct your path uh, the path of knowing the path of learning uh, the path of understanding uh, and so uh, he brings them to the point uh, where they must make an assessment uh, mm, and he tells them I want to read it right from the text he says oh my God now therefore fear God that's holy reverence a respect for you're always ready to bow down to him if you don't bow to nobody else bow to the king of kings oh it is a state of mental and emotional humility when you stand before such an awesome God hallelujah you realize with a thought he could blink you out of existence or put you in an eternal damnation and so you bow revering who he is oh my god and then he says and serve him in sincerity he says now <clears throat> my god he uses the word for serve the word obad and it means to become a servant or to enslave yourself to god the bishop are we supposed to hush the bible says in the new testament uh, that you are not your own look at somebody say i know you say this is my life no it's not you are living a life that god purchased and therefore you belong to him your lawnmower can't tell you don't hold me that way don't do me that way you'll say what i don't care if it's computer speaking i don't care if it's suri sorry and serious you're gonna say uh, whatever and turn the computer off and ride it up a hill and run it over rocks because you bought it to use the way you see fit he says now remember you are not your own for you were bought with the price therefore glorify god in your memory tell somebody with your hands mm with your arms with your head with your mouth with your mind oh my god and so well that don't mean we are slave he said living sacrifice i've sacrificed so i can live for god look at somebody and tell them and tell them then you can't use attitude the way you want to I, i've got to preach this stuff out of us because if you don't make the rapture you're gonna say but he never told us yes i'm telling you 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 cannot live any way you want to and say anything you want to and do to people anything you want to and make it to heaven. You cannot. 
oh my God. And so he says, and serve him, enslave yourself with sincerity. In other words, with the integrity of truth and entirely. Ask somebody, do you entirely give you to God before you say yes? Take an analysis. How many times did God say do? And you said, hmm. I don't know how they're going to receive it. I don't know if it will work. But let's go on. He says, and in truth, put away the gods. This term deals with Elohim, small e. And it literally means that there is a force behind your decisions. There is a force behind the force. Sometimes you are choosing, but you don't know why you're choosing. Sometimes you're responding, but you don't know why you're responding. Tell somebody there is an inspiration moving you. Oh, you don't hear me. And then he says, and put away the gods which your daddy and mama, granny and uncle Louise and all of those did, hallelujah, before the flood. Mm, that's another time where they had another system of worship. And then he goes on, he says, and if it seen evil, now he's setting them up so they can make the decision where they can now make an assessment. He says, and if it seem evil, and he uses the choice of words, ra'ah. In other words, if serving God is so bad, so dull, so boring, so meaningless, so inhibiting, so constrictive, then he tells them, if it's evil to you and unproductive to serve your God, he said, then you choose. And it's very interesting here because he uses the word bakar. And this term means to select what is acceptable to you. But you, oh my God, in the choosing, make sure it's the excellent choice for you. In other words, if God don't work for you, and I'm going to say if he don't, this because you're not letting him. <laughs> Hallelujah. But if it is evil, then you choose what you think is beneficial to you. He says then, choose today. Tell somebody today. There comes a point in time where after you say, will you marry me? Uh, 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 uh. Will you marry me? Now this is the second day. Uh, uh, third day. You're going to say, listen, I'm not going to put my life on hold while you are determining. Now this is the last time. Some of us, when they say, ah, the first time, you say, okay, later for you. Uh, listen, there's all kind of fish in the sea. And why are you trying to test me to see if I'm worthy of your love, how you know you worthy of mine. Quit all this superiority complex. I've given you the best years. Listen, honey, from the other person's perspective, you don't know what a good year is rather than the best year. You suppose that you're all that in a bag of chips and a plate of chitlins. You may not even be a bucket of unclean chitlins. Let me leave it alone. Now, Oh my God, uh, y'all praying for me? I need this to get over the hump and I'm almost finished. And so he said, so choose whether, hallelujah, the gods of your fathers you're going to serve on the other side of the flood or the gods of this world. Now, if you don't want God, this world has a lot of gods. Asmodeus, oh, y'all not hearing me. Hecate, there is the, the uh, uh, earth goddess worship. That's where all this feminism comes from. I don't know if we can say this, but I've already said it. Mm. All this feminism that's trying to tear up families and make woman greater than man. Listen, hallelujah, where the woman has the baby, where 
Adam had Eve through the hand of God. And the Bible says, and their name will be Adam. They were created to walk side by side in the uniqueness of their difference. A woman is not a man and a man is not a woman. They are not equal because they're uniquely different. She has her own strength. He has his. And they complement one another. Oh, let's move on. He said the gods of the Amorites in the land which ye dwell. Now who are you going to serve? Are you going to serve the voodoo God? I forget his name, the God of mischief. Hey, Joker, I give you a toka. Uh, come on here. Who are you going to serve? God said, I give you that choice and you must make an assessment. The God of guilt, the God of anger, the God of loneliness, the God of hurt, which God are you bowing down to now? Because God sent me to tell you today there is a time of reckoning and there is a time when God will say enough is enough. But Bishop, the word says that his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah, there's an adenum as long as I want to. Yeah, his mercy is forever because he still has mercy on the human race. But when God shows you kindness after kindness and grace after grace, then he says, choose ye this day. Uh, I'm almost finished, but I have an assessment question. Has he ever made a way out of no way for you? Mm -mm -mm. Has he ever opened doors for you? Has he ever lifted your spirit when you were heartbroken? Has he ever turned it around for you? Has he ever delivered you from the hand of the enemy? Does he provide for you strength and hallelujah peace and health of mind? Is he ever been a way maker, a heart fixer, a mind regulator? Has he he ever kept you in a time of trouble has he ever brought clarity to your mind then God says choose to tell you who you will serve the assessment must be made God I'm going back to where you picked me up. I'm going to do what you said to. I'm going to humble myself in the sight of the Lord and let you pick me up. I'm going to move into the arenas that you told me to move. I'm going back to my rod of power, back to hallelujah my anointing, back to the link, back to the word, back to my secret place he said choose to tell you hallelujah but ask for me and my house I'm gonna serve him today tomorrow and the next day as long as I live and he keeps me in my right mind I'm gonna praise him lift him up shout about it Give him the glory. Praise his name because he's been so good to me. And I'm going to give him all of me. You must choose today so God can put you on the plan for your life. stand with me and say as for me and my house gone as long as you give me strength keep me in my right mind I will I will serve the Lord give him a praise I will leap for joy, shout out praise. 
praises to his name. I will oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let's exalt his name together. Come on here. Magnify. Give him praise. Give him glory. He told me to tell you, if you come back, there is an open door. I don't know what door you shut, but God said, I, I will open it, bring you through it, and bless you in it. Tell somebody, I've got to run get my blessing. I've got to praise him through. I've got to thank him because he didn't get rid of me. He didn't drop me. Even when I dropped him, he is wonderful, glorious, and I give him praise and honor. Come on, lift his praise. Come on, lift his praise, lift his praise. Every now and then, you got to check yourself. You got to check yourself before you talk. You got to check yourself. You trying to tell other folk how to treat their health when yours is out of line. Check yourself. You trying to check other folks at, oh my God, attitudes when you've had eight attitudes and an emotional breakdown. Check yourself. Oh my God, my God, my God. You've got to take an assessment. Whether church need to pray, how often do you pray? I mean really pray. People don't know the word, do you know it? Mm. I've learned, usually when people start talking about themselves, I don't make comments because I don't know where you are really. Now when you start relating to me, I'm going to tell you back up the train. You got to know you before you can attempt to know me. Oh, you don't hear me. In other words, what, what them, uh, them, them singers, there's five of them I think, they were brothers. And I sing the old time gospel. Clean up your own backyard. Listen, you clean up you and leave me alone. Amen. Walking around slamming stuff. Uh, you, you just act different. Well, that's because you see me different because you're acting different. Look at somebody and say, what about you? Come on, look at somebody and tell them what about you. If you can't, it's because you're remembering everything you've done and now put your hand on you and say Lord what about me am I pleasing in your sight if the rapture occurred today would I make it and I always say we always give ourselves an A when we have no grades in the grade book because we don't want to assess us faulty oh you don't hear me but this is a time for examination. You've got to make an assessment. Are you ready to die for God today? Mm. Are you willing to live for him today? Some folk it's easy to die because that just means you give up. But are you willing to live for him until he calls you home? The assessment. The more and more I live, and I don't know if it's a senior thing, 
or if it's just a God thing as you get closer. But I'm taking assessment of me. I try with everything that's in me not to criticize people's lifestyle. I'm talking about the saints now. I don't even criticize the folk in the world because when you're in the world and don't know Christ, you do what you do. And so I leave folk alone. Are, are you hearing me? Because I have enough to do to concentrate on me. Lord, have I finished studying what you told me to study? Lord, do I know enough so I can impart it to your people? And every day I'm praying, Lord, teach me how to learn. Teach me how to teach. God, teach me how to use my voice because we are competing with the world who masters in persuasion. I was reading and listening to some teaching today and it is very interesting that perhaps 70 to 80 percent of our children in what we call middle school and school agers, they identify as pansexual. In other words, I'm not attracted to male or female. I can just hook up with anybody that stimulates my mind. All right, I'm gonna leave it alone because I, I know you declare you done raised yours and you done done this and you've done such a perfect job, but the world has a strong pull and the, ro the world has a strong ability to manipulate perspectives. You don't know what your children are facing in schools. You don't know. Because when you're that age, the power of peers will cause you to back up. I know some kids who refuse to get an A because the dummies in class who can't, they make fun of them when they get A's. And so instead of being an outcast, they will fall right in with the buffoonery that happens in the class. They don't have enough integrity and strength to be their own person. I'm so glad I was raised during the time I was because we better not get suspended. Oh, you don't hear me because you didn't come and lay around. You washed walls, you cut grass, you washed trash cans, you worked and you wished you could go back to school. And that was after you got your face slapped. Oh, you don't hear me. And we were taught, I don't care what people say. I don't care what they do. I'm your mama. I'm your daddy. Now nine times out of 10, the daddy wasn't always in the home. So mama was strong as a daddy. Now you don't hear me. And certain things we just knew we better not do. I don't care. They didn't care how cute you were and if you had eight dimples. You would have two on this head and the cheek and the, here and right on your nose. They didn't care. They'd slap you until them dimples filled up. Smiling and grinning. <laughs> and oh, he's so cute, so cute, so cute. You better knock that joke. Now listen. <laughs> I'm not telling you to knock his brains out. They don't have that many in there. That's why they're acting the way they're acting. I'm talking about proverbial. You got to get on that case. And while you're getting on that case, you got to pray. Because now, you know, kids are smart. They got their little cell phones on. And every time you slap them, they're pushing the camera. Until they get enough nerve to send it to the counselor or the policeman. But back in the day, when they whooped your tail, I remember one of my cousins, he gonna run to the door, abuse, child abuse, child abuse. And my aunt stopped, she opened every window, opened the door, she said, I'm abusing him and I'm about to kill him. Call children's services before I kill him. And he said, I'm gonna run away. She said, don't run. 
take your time and pack up your stuff and leave my suitcase and leave everything that I bought you. And he said, well, I don't have nothing to put in my bag. He said, <laughs> she said, that's what you came here with. That's what you can leave with. Because when you want to go outside of my house, that means you're outside of my provisions. All right, I, I, I'm going to leave alone parroting because you have your own paradigm. But Bishop, that's kind of crude. It's kind of crude too when children are shooting their parents. I worked in a school system for years and part of my job was working in the attendance office. And I was amazed. Parents came in crying. I can't get her to go to school. I said, and who is your daughter? Uh, so and so and so and so. I said, what grade is she in? Sixth grade. And my eyes must have got bigger than what they were. I could have sworn that they did kind of like David's. They not open and went all the way around here. And I'm saying, you mean she's in the sixth grade? And you can't get her to go to school? And then she said, well, can y'all just whoop them? I said, ma'am, no, the parents took that out of school. We can't do that. Well, what, what can I do? I said, well, I can send you to the counselor. And me and the school psychologist were back there, and we were just smiling. And she said, Mr. Reeves, they need to just take them kids. Now, now this is what the psychologist said. Some of them have never been disciplined. And that's why they put all those labels on. See, kids are intelligent. You go to school, you get a handbook of school rules. You know how many times you can be suspended. You know what your rights are. You only have two rights as far as I'm concerned. One, the right to not be abused. No teacher should be slapping you around and following you and doing whatever. And then the right to come and learn. All this other stuff. You can act up so many times and disrupt the class so many times. Garbage. Let me say it the way some of y'all say garbage. We've got to make a choice. We've got to make an assessment. And don't flip to the other side where you're going to punish your kids. Now, you get in that room and read the Bible. No, you get in the room and read the Bible. Don't ever use spiritual things as a punishment. You're going to sit here until you speak in tongues, and I'm going to be watching. Listen, uh, we can't even bring folk to the altar now and say, come on, speak, speak. I know I got to. Then speak. The whole world has changed. I remember they would have those sessions to make sure you were renewed. And if you had trouble speaking, they would help pray you through. But in today's time, hmm, got the nerve to tell me to speak in tongues. I know I got the Holy Ghost. We haven't heard you speak since Methuselah died. Come on here. And when you do speak, we don't know if a witch possesses you or whatever. Because some of the tongues I'm hearing, I don't know if it's coming from the Holy Ghost. Listen, God is not the God of the scratch. He is not a DJ. All right. You have to make a choice. If it is so evil to serve God, then serve who you're going to serve. But be prepared for the consequences of your choice. You can't have it both ways. I want the blessings of God, but I don't want God. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. How would you feel? I like you, but I like her. Can I just have both of you? Now, some people go for that. Because they have no confidence in themselves. Listen, you, I'm not a bag of Fritos and when you want Fritos, but you want chips. So you got your hand in both bags. Listen, honey, you got to choose me. And don't choose me so I can be your whipping boy either. Come here. I'm so glad I had a good parent. 
Because she said, when folk call you out of the name, they didn't call your name, so don't respond. Amen. And when folk talk to you like a child, if you're not a child, then don't, you don't have to answer. And folk get aggressive with me speaking, I do just like this. Don't you hear me? Because really, I'm not listening. I'm not listening. And I don't have to listen. Wives, you are not the mother. Husbands, you're not the father. Deal with one another with due benevolence. And I got enough sense. When I'm talking, you're not listening. I'm not going to waste any more words. When I'm talking and you talking over me, then you go ahead and have the conversation with you because I'm going to go downstairs and study or watch something where I can get some meaningful dialogue. Amen. Amen. Right, but can you speak up? No, because last time I spoke up, you didn't listen. So I'm tired of talking to myself, so we both win. What am I saying? We don't have time to keep playing the games. You're trying to test me to see if I think you're worthy. Listen, if I'm still here with your tail, But I just, I just need you to fight for me. Why? Why? When you don't even fight for yourself. Am I the number one in your life? I'll tell you from the beginning, no. Jesus is. Am I your best friend? No, Jesus is. I mean human. I don't know. Why don't I know? Because I really don't know where your head is. For you ought to. <laughs> if I told you where I thought your head was, you, you wouldn't want to hear it. All right, let's stand. I'm, I'm... I want to take my time with you because Things have changed so much in this world. I don't know if we're ready for what the world and what the world changers are trying to turn the world into. I agree with socialists on one point. It is a theoretical point. Theoretically, we should take care of one another, yes, sir. and we all should be equal. But there is an X factor. I don't know if I can trust the oligarchs who control the system to be, hear me, yes, non-partial. As long as man and flesh are involved, Somebody's always going to control it, control me, control the narrative, and they will determine your worth and what you get. But no trust in the arm of flesh, what he means in the power of flesh. We serve an awesome God. Hmm. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusteth in him. Mm. This is a time where God wants to show his mighty hand. Sometimes I weep for those who have gone on to be with the Lord because I miss them. But I have to realize, and I say that because I've lost a lot of friends, a lot of people that I love. And just about a week ago, a couple of weeks, I didn't know if I was going to be here. And when you go through the shadow, the valley of the shadow of death, it makes you draw nigh to what is of utmost importance. 
I had to have a little talk with Jesus. And I talk with him on a daily basis, but when it hits home, and you realize that the veil of eternity is much thinner than what you thought, you start really asking, Lord, if you came for me today, am I really ready? Now tell somebody, if you've got to ask that question, nine times out of ten, you're not certain if you've achieved what God wants for you to achieve. And when the discomfort gets so bad, you start with sincerity, God, have mercy, just take me home, have mercy. And God, in his wisdom, I'm not through with you yet. Look at somebody and tell them, if you are still here, has a purpose for your life. Mm. If you're still here, you are important in the scheme of God's plan. Mm. The devil will try to tell you it's your fault that your life is messed up. Not so, not so. You try to tell you nobody loves you. You've got to stand up and tell him, if nobody human loves me, I know you do. But if there's a church in the earth, God has put love in that body and somebody loves me. They may not be able to get to me and tell me, come here, you, you are important, you're beautiful, I love you, I love you, I love you. But rest assured, God is putting you on somebody's heart. You're here because God has so deemed it to be. God has so chosen you. Mm. There are times you've got to go back. Go back and get a word. God, speak to me. I don't need to know about the agricultural prices or uh, the stock market or where the bitcoins are going to rise and fall because ultimately it's all going to wind up in the hands of the Antichrist. God, all I need to know, am I pleasing to you? God, are you with me? Mm. God, are you with me? The End Time Apostolic Christian Holiness Church would like to thank you for listening to the anointed Word of God. For a copy of this message or to receive information about the Apostolic Christian Holiness Ministry, contact us at 614-274-8217 or write to us at 650 South Warren Avenue, Columbus, Ohio 43204 or you can visit us on the at www.in-time.org. We are conveniently located off of I-70 West, exit 98A, just five minutes west of downtown. Thank you for listening, and until next time, may God bless you and keep you.